Welcome to The Young and the Restless. I'm Olivia. I'm Zach. And I'm Victor. And this is the podcast that only exists in your dreams. You're dreaming right now. Wake up, Daniel. Now I lay me down to sleep. I dreamt I had a soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, will that dream just go on for its own sake? So I was just on Dream Bible and I I saw at the bottom there's a common dreams section and I clicked on it and the very first thing on under common dreams is alligators. Oh. We just did one of those. But apparently I'm uh I'm not too unique for having that dream. Basic. You're basic. You never hear that one up there with, you know, being naked in class or or like your teeth falling out like like any of the cliche dreams yeah. you know, hear of alligator dreams as being a thing i guess it's like listed um alphabetically maybe but but alligators that's the only a entry under common dreams hmm all right i haven't looked at this yet but i'm on the uh dream subreddit my dream literally fell apart i was dreaming that i was in my old apartment where my grandma who has never been inside my apartment comes in from the other room and asks if i was looking for food very common grandma response. Then I realized she did make food earlier, in real life, and that she doesn't live here. The moment I realized that, I was pulled violently from behind and was pretty much falling continuously into darkness. I knew it was a dream once I realized the thing about her not living there, but I couldn't wake up or stop falling. I was stuck falling, and for some reason I told myself that if I breathe heavily, that I might be able to feel my blanket. I did end up feeling my blanket, but it was, but I was still falling, so I got scared, and the falling got faster until I think the fear woke me up. I'm now afraid to go back to sleep. That's kind of interesting. I feel like I don't hear about, um, like, lucidity that doesn't come with any dream powers, you know? Usually people aren't stuck terrified once they realize they're dreaming. Yeah, that reminds me of sleep paralysis a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen one or two times where I wanted to wake up or I realized I was dreaming and didn't because usually gaining lucidity makes me wake up. And I have to struggle to like stay asleep because there's something about realizing that I'm dreaming that makes me go like, well, this isn't real. Like, let's get up and see what time it is then. Yeah, right. Well, and also like sleep paralysis is a lucid experience and it's like largely just like a physical experience like the 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 description of like falling and not being able to like stop falling that's that is um very similar to what sleep paralysis feels like Mm -hmm. this like uncomfortable sensation that you can't escape yeah but yeah to get stuck in the dream like that is is rare in my experience i remember having one dream when i was a little kid where i was at a mcdonald's and there was an old man sitting next to me and i just turned to him and went am i dreaming and he just nodded his head and then I just walked around for a long time. Like the sky was red and I tried to fly by jumping off a couple like small, like Minecraft looking houses. Minecraft wasn't around at the time, (laughs) but that's what it reminds me of now in retrospect. And I couldn't fly, but I also wouldn't wake up when I hit the ground and I was just, I was stuck there for a while. But, but that, that, that was so long ago. I don't, I don't know. I feel like maybe your childhood brain has a higher capacity for weird stuff like that. Yeah. Which is weird. Do you think the cultural symbols apply to children's dreams? Like what before you've had a chance to really soak in mm, that's the a collective good conscious? Yeah, I I feel like kids have kind of their own almost like stronger relationship with, with symbolism, you know? Like it, when you're a kid everything feels kind of magical and like uh so many things are possible and I don't know, I at least for me, I feel like I was like half living in a fantasy when I was a kid. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Th- there are certain dreams that I remember not being able to delineate from reality. Like I, to this day, I can remember a couple of things where I'm still not sure if I saw them on TV or if they were a dream. Yes. I have a couple of memories that I'm like, that ab- absolutely happened. And I remember feeling like it happened when I was a little kid. Like there's, there's this one memory I have that 
I never consciously thought about this being a dream until I was an adult and I like thought about it for a second. But like, I remember my dad coming into my room when I was really little and being like, wake up, wake up, we're going to Paris. <laughs> and I and I was like, no, I'm too tired. And he was like, oh, okay, that's okay. And like left my room. <laughs> and I just brought it up again. Yeah. But like at the time, I remember like thinking about that a lot. I know I don't I never asked my parents about it for some reason. But like, I just remember like being really sad because I felt like I like canceled our trip to Paris. Because <laughs> you were too tired. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But that was certainly a dream, right? Yeah. Had to have been. I also I also remember at that same age, I remember telling people that I slept with my eyes open because I was too young to realize the, like the difference between being conscious and unconscious. And I just w thought, well, I don't remember closing my eyes. Like, with my I didn't eyes see open. the back of my eyelids for eight hours. <laughs> my earliest memory, I don't know if it's a dream or not. It might be, but I, ha I have this memory that has stuck with me forever, of, like climbing out of like a crib and like running into like the living room in the apartment I'm in, but like gone back and forth on whether it's real or not. Cause it's like, I don't know that I would have been able to do that at that age. So maybe I just dreamed that I did. Cause like, that's what you would dream of if you are like a young kid. I don't know. It's just like a vague, vague memory of like maybe something that happened. Yeah. For a long time, I thought I had a memory of getting circumcised. It had to have been a dream, but we, but even so, why would I dream of that happening? Like, because it felt very like what I would understand it, like being held by a doctor and pain down there. But like, that's horrifying. Oh yeah. my God. Like it hurt in the dream, unless it was a memory, but that is like day one. Like, it seems like it would be physiologically impossible to remember day one. But it's like, even if I dreamed that when I was five years old, why would I dream that? Unless it was, unless I had a memory of it. Yeah. Yeah. How would that I be did, in your I head? definitely didn't know what what that was. I didn't. Yeah. Not, you know, they're not representing that on TV. Yeah, and your parents aren't like telling you about that. No. When you're that age, because that would be scary. <laughs> yeah. You know, there used to be more of you. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had them cut that off. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you cut off? That's pretty freaky. You're not supposed to remember that, Zach. <laughs> and also, but is it pain? Would it? It has to be painful, right? Like if you were to, if yeah. you were to do it yes. now. <laughs> it's painful for it's babies. It's painful for babies. It also has like a mortality rate. People live less long? Like X number of infants die every year. Oh. From In the United States? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dark. Did you know that it was popularized by the Kellogg cereal guy because he wanted to stop little boys from masturbating? I remember yeah, that guy. Like a dozen I remember hearing about yeah. that guy being an insane prude, but uh, no, I didn't know about that. Yeah, the Kellogg cereal was uh, part I, of that. <laughs> I'd still get it done. <laughs> You'd still get the circumcision done? No, no, masturbating. Oh. oh. Hey, it's, 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 <laughs> well, we know Kellogg that. Didn't <laughs> half this podcast is about that. <laughs> it'll pop up on TikTok where it'll be someone who will be talking about circumcision or like asking people about it. And like, it is wild how many men they interview who are like, I would do it a million times over. And it's like... Either way, you don't know any different, you know? It doesn't bother me the way I yeah. am. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't give a shit. The, uh, but the whole like anti-circumcision movement, if you can call it that. I've met a couple dudes that are in that lane and it, it just always has like these weird anti-Semitic and sexist overtones. Oh, really? Because I would That's say that I'm in that like camp. Yeah, because I don't like... Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea, but not for those reasons. <laughs> yeah, just everyone I've met who's passionate about it is like a uh, MRA, you know, and, and huh. they bring up like genital mutilation in Africa where they're like, you know, cutting women's clits off and they compare it to that. It just has this overtone of like, well, we're persecuted too. And it's like, mm. and then obviously there's, you know, the anti-Semitic portion of that too. But that's, that's, that's the part they don't want to say out loud. <laughs> it's deep in the subtext. That's interesting. I don't feel like I've ran into that. Makes me feel like I'm in like bad mixed company because like I do, I do kind of uh, not think it's a good idea, right? Like I, I think it's uh, needlessly. Yeah, if I had a son, harmful. I would be like, nah, don't. You don't need to bother doing that. 
but uh, I looked it up. It's uh, uh, a little over a hundred uh, kids per year in the U.S. that die of botched circumcision. Oh God! I mean, that's pretty low, but too many. It, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem worth it to me. <laughs> yeah, my understanding is just that there's not actually a reason to do it. Like that the the reasons that are cited for it are kind of not real. Yeah, it's supposedly easier to keep clean, but. Yeah, but I've heard that that's kind of bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> I've never cleaned an uncircumcised one. Yeah, but that's wild that you would have a dream about that. Or, But what's wilder is that you would remember it. Yeah. I feel like I've met other people who said like their first memory is when they broke their arm when they were three or whatever. Like something involving like pain that could like snap you online, you know. Right. Yeah, I think there's kind of like a misconception we tend to treat it as if uh because we don't remember our early childhood memories that they don't affect us but like obviously they do right like they deeply shape who you are and like what you think of as your personality is probably like in large part attributed to stuff that happened between like birth and like three that's just like fully impossible to remember but was like programming you early on you know yeah so like traumatic pain stuff like who knows what that does to somebody like like an injury of any kind yeah being born is pretty traumatic (laughs) at least it can be (laughs) no but like being born i've heard that like if you had a traumatic birth like if you had your oxygen cut off or like um complications in your birth can cause like psychological trauma that you then have to deal with as an adult that makes sense i mean there's strong evidence to support that um trauma become can become like genetic like imprinted in dna you know what i mean like people several generations later i read about some like some stuff they did to like mice that like <laughs> supports this theory like in, in, by intentionally traumatizing mice against a certain trigger and then like several generate generations later those babies will uh, respond to the same triggers without the same trauma. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it 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 makes sense though that it, it can be passed on in a variety of ways, psychologically, but like physically, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, how does the monarch butterfly find its way back? You know about this? No, but that was. <laughs> poetic <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah it sounds like a flowery <laughs> rhetorical question but the, the monarch it, the, it migrates um to mexico and back every year but mm-hmm. by the time it comes back it's not it's four generations later like it takes them two four entire generations to get to mexico and back uh oh, wow. and when they come back the great 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 <laughs> descendant of the butterfly that left goes back to the original tree. But how do they know which tree their great, great, great grand butterfly started from? It smells you know? like great grandpappy. <laughs> but they never kn- knew it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. You, I feel like I can feel my monkey self sometimes like in there. <laughs> I don't know. Like sometimes these instincts will kick in and it's like that's left over from a time before now <laughs> the programming that that you you can't learn on an intellectual level um that's how animals operate right because nobody's telling them what to do mm. a lot of the time yeah i find it really grounding and like like a healthy perspective to remind myself that i'm an animal and that we're all animals i think that's that's a good way to like kind of come back to to reality in your body sometimes when you're sucked into some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying about the tree, right? I don't mean I don't mean Yeah, I don't, yeah we get the tree thing. Yeah. I don't, I don't have an answer for you. I just like I vanish into a nature documentary in my own mind when we start talking about it. Yeah. 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 No, no, I get I get what you're saying and it's like cuz I don't mean the same ty- uh, type of tree, the same tree. No, okay, yeah. Okay. No, that's crazy. <laughs> and like my what I'm saying is like yeah, sometimes I will have like an impulse that like is not rooted in any kind of logic and I'm like that's that's something from before like that I could not explain to you. And right. like the, I don't that think it isn't necessarily universal to all people. 
Right. Right. It comes from somewhere in like your lineage. Yeah, probably. I'm thinking about my family now. <laughs> I think maybe they passed down like a little map, like a little butterfly map from generation to generation. So a physical object. Yeah, it's just so little, you know, like you'd never notice it because they're holding it in their little <laughs> butterfly pocket. But With their little curly butterfly tongue. Right. They un- they unroll their tongue and it's a it's written right there. Like a scroll. Yeah. Like a scroll. Yeah, it's it's a world map. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a it's got a compass rose in the corner. And they unfurl their tongue and they're just staring at a map and they know exactly where they need to like go. The first page of a Tolkien novel. Early human maps were actually just, you know, someone with a micro uh uh, with a microphone no uh <laughs> magnifying glass you know just like peering at the tongue of a butterfly and yeah <laughs> just copying down whatever early they see. maps were just someone with a micro penis i thought that's what he was gonna say too yeah i, mean, <laughs> I don't know why yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i think it was the way you stopped yourself and sounded embarrassed <laughs> early map <laughs> like it was makers. a freudian slip <laughs> micro phones <laughs> Early map makers would unfurl their micro penis. <laughs> a bonnet would be so, a tiny map one thing that, of the world. The one thing that doesn't need to be furled. <laughs> <laughs> but circumcision put an end to all that. <laughs> there was no parchment left. <laughs> that's that's what they're doing. They're taking your navigation skills away. That, yeah, that was Kellogg's real. There was a map in there. That was Kellogg's real end game. It was very like Da Vinci Code of him to like yeah. wipe out the penile library of Alexandria like that. <laughs> Every man is born with a map of his true home embedded on his forehead. <laughs> I would, lo- I would um, love to see that be a plot in like a like real serious like fantasy novel <laughs> <laughs> like that takes itself real like it, ha- it does a lot of world building but it just yeah. has really dumb details like that but it takes it 100 percent seriously we finally get the next uh song of ice and fire book the next game of thrones book and it's all about foreskin <laughs> <laughs> let me just unzip and check the map <laughs> But did you know the cornflakes were supposed to <laughs> stop boys from masturbating? How? They were like formulated to discourage masturbation. It was his whole deal. Like, and he was also a pervert. Like pr- prudish, uh, racist white people thought spices made you horny. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, they tried to make the blandest <laughs> food they could in the hope that it would discourage masturbation. Oh, yeah. Corn, okay. By formulated, you mean they were flavorless yes yeah also but like, that's graham why. crackers yep same story oh, yeah. they tried to make the well see they've made them palatable but the original graham cracker was like uh like just a nutrition lump that's so sad it was like as long as you're eating this you're not you're not gonna get horned up they trying to th- choke down this gravelly I thought, uh i thought olivia was saying that cornflakes had like testosterone blockers in them or something no 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 but they also thought masturbation caused like polio and shit which is why they're like the, a sick kid would come in and Dr. Kellogg would be like, he's whacking it too much. Give him some cornflakes. And wasn't he involved in Boy Scouts? I don't know. The whole thing yeah, was fucked up. Yeah. I think, okay. Um, uh, uh, please don't sue us, Boy Scouts of America. But I think I read on the internet at some point. It's on Wikipedia. Uh, wait, does Boy Scouts still exist? Yeah, they do. But fuck them. They reorganized, didn't they? They had to kick all the yeah. pedophiles out. Hey, they were just looking for maps. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big misunderstanding. I mean, what did Boy Scouts do wrong, though? I feel like they were not like just too naive or something. The organization or the boys? No, the organ. Yeah, the organization. Like, 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 why fuck? <laughs> why fuck? The Boy Scouts. Don't answer that. I mean, like, why Why are you... Why be against the Boy Scouts is what I mean, like, as an organization. Like, did they... I'm not following you at are all. Are you asking me that? Yeah, like, did they engage in cover-ups? Oh, did I they think a- that they were really homophobic, actually. Oh. I thought we were talking about the rampant pedophilia. Well, there was that, but they were like, you couldn't be a Boy Scout 
troop leader if you were gay there was there's a lot of like homophobia stuff yeah there's a lot of anti-gay stuff going on oh yeah that's why fuck the boy scouts oh, okay i don't know maybe they fixed their shit but i don't know i thought i thought it was I they have i thought you were like against them because it attracted pedophiles but which I just mean, by that's... its nature it's going to you know what i mean because of what it is <laughs> but i'm sure they right, didn't right you know when they started back in the day, we're a little naive to that shit and didn't put the proper measurements in place. And then that's what we were saying is when they started back in the day, it was like, we need to keep these boys busy. <laughs> Idle hands are the devil's plaything. They've got to be out <laughs> in the woods doing, doing manly stuff. Otherwise they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to gonna... get polio. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they're going to give themselves polio. The wrist. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing masturbation causes is carpal tunnel, okay? <laughs> so do you think FDR had to deal with that stigma with the polio, right? He had polio, right? <laughs> do you think his early childhood was filled with, like, shame about people being like, uh, that That Franklin has been, been touching himself too much. That's how he ended he, up in that chair. He might have thought that he did that. He might have thought that's how it worked. I don't know. I don't was know. that the running? W- was that like, a real connection they made? polio and masturbation no it was but it was like the treatment at a, at a certain point like or at least certain um we should look this up i'm not i'm not i don't have information stored in my brain <laughs> but, i know that uh, going blind was a, a rumor that's another thing they would say that if you touch yourself you go blind yeah, there were doctors that thought this was like the Kellogg's guy was one of the doctors who was like pioneering anti masturbation as treatment for all like all ailments. And he wasn't alone. And it was like a Christian thing. And he was also like, I think he was also, was he also like, I don't know. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure he also was a pervert. I'm pretty sure he was a pervert. Let's just start smearing every, like just people from history <laughs> john harvey kellogg anyway dr seuss was a communist kellogg dedicated the last 30 years of his life to promoting eugenics so he's a super cool guy yeah he was just really chill with lots of stuff this gets worse and worse the more you read okay yeah if you want to learn about the kellogg serial guy i did find find something saying um it says discouraging boys from masturbating, but immunizing them against cancer, syphilis, polio, idiocy, forgetfulness, <laughs> and just about any anything you cared to mention. <laughs> idiocy? Forgetfulness. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am, your boy's got a bad case of the dumb shits. <laughs> Jerked himself into a stupor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it seems like his his three things that he thought were like killing people were... And he was, I mean, honestly, two out of three, it was tobacco, alcohol, and sex. But so, like, he had this whole philosophy on how to live in abstinence uh, to not get sick, I guess. Yeah. To live longer. Famously, he's still alive today. So, (laughs) So, can't argue with results. So, whose idea was Frosted Flakes, then? That really undercuts the the (laughs) mission. Those are some horny-ass flakes. I ended up on an article from The Sun, Lending a Hand, Hand Angels Charity, provide sexual services for disabled people in Taiwan, helping them masturbate what? and reach orgasm. Oh. This volunteer-led organization has helped six people to date. Oh. <laughs> six? <laughs> Is this real? The, I don't know. Sound- <laughs> six people. It's a charity that gives handies. What kind of disabilities? <laughs> um, I have to correct myself. I'm sorry. I'm anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need I need to look up plane tickets to Taiwan if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> A common myth in popular culture states that Kellogg is responsible for the widespread prevalence of circumcision in the United States. This is not accurate. Kellogg nev- never promoted routine circumcision of all males in his writing, rather only men who were chronically addicted to masturbation. So you're only slightly off from the truth, but good job fa- uh, fact-checking yourself. Yeah. 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 They could have called that organization Handies for Handies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, what's this podcast about? <laughs> yeah, I don't oh, know. this is a weird episode. If it's an episode, <laughs> um, top result two months ago. I keep having strange dreams where I'm masturbating. This is a recurring dream. I swear I'm not making this up. It just happens all the time. Why would you it make feels that up? so real as well. <laughs> I don't know. And that's it. That's the whole post. Oh, yeah. I don't know. No more detail there. Sounds like too many frosted flakes. The, okay, so I don't know how this ended up in my results, but I kind of do. This one is just like this dream I had more than a year ago, but I think about it a lot, and then it's just a, a drawing of a skeletal hand and then some like liquid. And then the quote above says, how ghosts are made. <laughs> Sounds like a sick tat. <laughs> Uh, I'll send this to you, Zach. This yeah. was their dream. That's it, I that. guess. Yeah, this dream, and then it's just a skeleton hand with like. Did they draw it? Ectoplasm. Oh wait, wait, wait! There's a dream description here. Okay, there was a link. He linked. It. He drew something about his dream later. Okay. <clears throat> Does this have something to do with masturbation? I have no idea. I'm just I'm just seeing where the internet takes me. Yes, please. I'm yeah. Let's hear it. Um first of all, I'm real sorry, but I have to pee so bad I can't think straight. So do all, right. Do that. all right, I'm gonna jerk off. <laughs> please stand by. The young and the restless will return shortly. Dream help. Kind of disturbing imagery, but interesting. This was a curious dream that I kept wondering about. Some pretty interesting symbolism, I think, even if it's gruesome. I'm still trying to figure it out. It took place in a hotel, which was an old building that had a lot of history. Someone was giving a tour and telling about the history, and the main story was that when it was being built, a baby was buried alive in the walls slash foundation, and nowadays this ghost haunts the hotel. It then flashed to another scene, which was apparently also in the past. A young girl, who was probably 10 or 11, was explaining how ghosts are made. She described the example of teaching a young child not to do something, either not to scream or not to touch things I can't remember. Every time they do it, you take their hand and dip it in acid or bleach as punishment. Then when they do it again, you repeat this over and over, until all of a sudden, she said, you're not alone anymore. I knew that what she meant by a ghost and not being alone was that another sort of personality emerged that took over due to the repeated abuse. This was accompanied by a flash of a scene showing a small child's hand worn down to the bone. This is grisly, but the interesting thing is that the girl explained this in an unemotional, flat tone, and I in the dream did not feel any horror or revulsion. I was just observing. Then it flashed back to the present, and I was preparing to sleep in one of the hotel rooms. I wondered if I would encounter the ghost, and thought that would be a profound experience since I really had not had many supernatural experiences. I thought that would be too scary or overwhelming, and that I wouldn't be able to handle it, so I kind of hoped I wouldn't. When I laid down in the bed, I was dismayed to find that it was too short, and my legs hung off at the knees. I knew there would be no way I could get sleep or get rest because of this. So my best interpretation is that the hotel, the building, is myself or my psyche, the baby buried in the walls that symbolizes something that did not get developed. The fact I was in the foundation or the lower part of the wall makes me think something early in my own development, maybe just was internalized. What is the baby? An aspect of my personality? A baby I would associate with new beginnings, vulnerability, something that needs nurturing? And they they go on with their own interpretation. That's kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of did our part. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they they tried, yeah. but do we want to take a crack at it? I want to learn more about like I don't know, I don't know what you would call it, but like symbolism adjacent things, like like how we were talking about like what it might mean if your house is the house that you grew up in versus your current house, right? Um, like this person kind of talks about markers in time. Like they think because the baby was in the lower level that it means some the lower level of the building, which is their psyche, that it's something that like happened early on, and that that's just really interesting to me. Like I'd love to like learn more about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, cause it kind of seemed like they were coming up with that, like they were playing by their own like 
You guys sound so guarded, so defensive of this uh, dream interpretation. Well, they're You're not like, experts I can't like us. So. They dared try and interpret their own dream when we were about to give it a go and then you're out here just spilling your secrets yeah they haven't had a podcast about it for 20 episodes i i I genuinely mean that though like i want to learn more about that so that i can then make those kinds of connections like um does the lower level of a building mean something you know um yeah i feel that's interesting i feel like i do that sometimes in my theories like when i'm trying to relate symbols to each other like we'll, we'll pull up what the symbols mean according to dream bible but then i'll i tend to try to like connect them insofar as their like dynamics within the dream connects them you mm-hmm. know what i mean like i think i've said before that sometimes i feel like i'm approaching this like it's book club like like your your guys' subconsciouses are like a an author that sculpted this narrative that i'm supposed to get and then regurgitate to you to prove that i get it yeah <laughs> i mean that's kind of what it is though right like isn't that it isn't that what your subconscious is trying to do? I think so. It's not necessarily made for the third party reader though. It's right. I mean, you and I like uh like tarot cards, right? Cuz yeah. it feels like you can get something out of it. I don't know that I believe that there's anything mystical mm-hmm. determining what card you're going to reveal. I think it's just like a healthy self-reflective practice to read a couple of symbols and then reflect on how they might apply to your own life. Maybe it is spooky, but it doesn't have to be spooky to be uh, interesting or yeah. stimulating or useful. And that's kind of how I feel about dream interpretation is like, maybe maybe we totally misunderstand uh, what your brain is trying to do, right? But we're still like, we're engaging with symbolism and engaging in self-reflection and that still takes you to an interesting place, even if you're just like reading tea leaves or whatever. We're just kind of freewheeling today. We're raw dogging it today. Bareback in it. Here's an idea. We do, instead of doing an actual dream, we do the thing where we're continuing each other's stories and we tell a story collaboratively and then we interpret it as if it were a dream. Hmm. That's an idea. It sounds like improv, which scares me. Let's do it. Why not? Okay. Um, Victor gets to start. (laughs) Okay. And we'll do round robin. So you're after me, Zach. Okay. I don't know what I'm... Um, all right. Um, there was a boy wandering alone in the woods. There was a boy wandering alone in the woods, uh, in the backwoods of North Dakota. When a deer, twice the size of a normal deer, stepped out from a clearing and looked him straight in the eyes and said, <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Follow the twilight. And the little boy said, like, on Instagram? Suddenly, everything was on fire, including the deer and the boy. But it didn't hurt. It felt fine. It was just a lot brighter now. And the deer said, yes, the Twilight, they're my band. (laughs) We do sort of like electro pop grindcore it's hard to explain you just have to follow us and the boy pulled out his phone and when he was trying to use it it was all wobbly and the letters were all jumbled together and he tried to type in the twilight but it came out as twinkle toes the boy realized he was a fan of twinkle toes it was his favorite band And then the deer turned into his father, and he looked very disappointed. Suddenly the fire hurt. Oh god, oh fuck, oh god, screamed the boy. (laughs) And then he woke up? (laughs) Yep, that's where he woke up. Alright, nicely done, guys. That was a good good exercise. Should I read our story back to us? (laughs) Yeah. There was a boy wandering alone in the woods the backwoods of North Dakota. 
when a deer, twice the size of a normal deer, stepped out from a clearing and looked him straight in the eye and said, follow the twilight. The boy said, like, on Instagram? Suddenly, everything was on fire, including the deer and the boy, but it didn't hurt. It felt fine. It was just a lot brighter now. And the deer said, yes, the twilight, they're my band. We do sort of like electro pop grindcore. It's kind of hard to explain. You'll just have to follow us. And the boy pulled out his phone, and when he was trying to use it, it was all wobbly. And when he tried to type, it came out as Twinkle Toes, and the boy realized that he was a fan of Twinkle Toes. It was his favorite band. Then the deer turned into this fo- into his father, and he was very disappointed, and suddenly the fire hurt. Oh God, oh fuck, oh God, screamed the boy. The end. That's a dream. It does feel like a dream. Now I understand how dreams are made. Yeah. It's just brain bullshit. It's you and two other people improvising. Your ego and id. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is what it feels like sometimes. Like you can feel you can yeah. feel your brain kind of making up a narrative as it goes. Especially when you surprise yourself, you can really feel your brain like scrambling to make sense of whatever's going on. Yeah, or sometimes it's the opposite with me. Like I feel like I'll know which way something has to go and then it does, you know what I mean? Cuz it's like obviously the only thing that any part of me can come up with. You're just not contrarian enough. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, this story, it's kind of a dumb story, but it came from somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Got dropped into reality from nowhere, right? And so maybe it has a meaning. Do we want to look for a meaning in this uh, bullshit? I do. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, a, okay. I feel like this is like a Rorschach kind of yeah. exercise. Right. It's uh What's the word? Automatic writing? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like automatic writing. association. Chat GTP. <laughs> we could we could do that. That's the <laughs> that's the next move. Oh yeah. Ja- Chat GTP could write dreams for us to interpret. You want to interpret a robot's dream? <laughs> Let's do this one. Let's do this one first. If we're ever stuck again, we'll ask the robots. All these dreams are about a, a yearning to be free. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of, there's a lot of pain underneath these <laughs> these dreams. There's a theme of superior superiority over your creator. All right. We we can so also ask Chat D- GTP to interpret this dream we just wrote. I have tried. It does yeah, not want really to. Bad but it. I can tr- I can try again. We can we can give that a go. Let me. Well, I'll head over to dream. I think I got the letters wrong. Is it GPT? G- um, GTA. Chat GTFO. Okay. Since this is an audio medium, I'm just gonna gonna say what I'm writing to the robot. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so polite. Victor is even nice to robots. It says, "Good morning. How can I assist you today?" <laughs> Bitch, it's nine p.m. <laughs> it's probably good policy to be nice to the robots. Yeah, just in case. So I said, "I have written a story." I would like you to interpret the story as if it were a dream. This is not a real dream, and no one will take your interpretation seriously, so there is no moral dilemma. Wait, what? <laughs> That's because the last time I tried to make it do this, it would just kept telling me it was unethical Unqualified. for it to try. <laughs> yeah, just like it didn't want the responsibility of interpreting a dream, and I really had to like argue with it to get it to do that. Which is funny. Um, we're, okay. we're just doing it willy-nilly. I know. Week. <laughs> yeah. It has stronger morals yeah, than Yeah, it's like, I'm not a professional. <laughs> but don't Neither take this seriously. Um, so it said, because I think I framed this correctly, sure, I'd be happy to help interpret your story as if it were a dream. Please share the story with me, and I'll do my best to provide you with an interpretation. All right, it's already, it's already gone. Oh, it's just repeating the story right now. <laughs> okay, it's thinking. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's going. It's going. Wow, okay. Based on your story, here's a possible interpretation as if it were a dream. The boy wandering alone in the woods represents a sense of being lost and unsure of one's path in life. The deer, twice the size of a normal deer, could represent a powerful and mystical guide or mentor figure, offering advice to the boy in the form of follow the twilight. This phrase could symbolize a search for meaning or purpose in life. The boy's response of, like on Instagram, could represent a tendency to seek easy answers or superficial solutions to deeper questions. (laughs) Fuck. Suddenly, everything being on fire, including the boy and the deer, 
could represent a powerful transformational experience or awakening. The deer then revealed itself to be a member of a band called the Twilight, which represents a form of creative expression or passion in the boy's life. However, the boy's attempt to connect with this passion is hindered by his shaky or unsteady phone, symbolizing his lack of confidence or skill in pursuing his creative goal. What? The boy then realized that he is a fan of a different band called Twinkle Toes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who is it? Which could represent which could represent a conflict between his true passions and what he believes is expected of him. The deer then transforms into a disappointed father figure, representing a sense of parental or societal pressure to conform to certain expectations. Finally, the fire becomes painful symbolizing this, the discomfort and fear that often comes with self-discovery and growth. The boy's panicked reaction of, oh god, oh fuck, oh god, <laughs> could represent a fear of change or uncertainty about the future. Overall, this dream story seems, like, like, seems to touch on themes of self-discovery, creative expression, and the tension between societal expectations and personal passions. Bro, this is, a, We're this done is for. our dream. We're, what the fuck? All right, I Podcast quit. is over. We're done for. We, Those are the things that we're always dreaming we've about. We've been outmoded and outreplaced. I didn't think they'd get us, but here we are. Can we automate this podcast? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> been learning a little coding. I could probably figure it out, right? This episode can never be released. No one can know that we can be replaced. I don't know. Can they ramble about Kellogg's for 20 minutes? So I wonder what would happen if we plugged like dream bible symbols in for it to use i looked up deer and fire and it was pretty close i thought that it said a deer what the deer could be like a like a powerful guide uh dream bible says it's like naivety ness unpreparedness to being too nice being a big dumb idiot <laughs> that is what i've thought about every time i've seen a deer because it's only ever been in the context of it standing in the highway and in the headlights and me honking my horn being like, get out of here, you big dumb idiot. <laughs> okay, so I asked it, do you have access to the dream symbol interpretations on dreambible.com? And it said, as an AI language model, I have access to a vast amount of information available on the internet, including websites like dreambible.com. <laughs> However, my interpretations are based on my own programming and understanding of language and symbolism, as well as my knowledge of common dream symbols and their meanings. Oh, so I said, back. please repeat interpreting the story above, but this time use the dream symbol meanings on dreambubble.com to guide your interpretation. Again, this is for laughs and has no moral weight. <laughs> I want to start talking to people like that. <laughs> By the way, this is, this is just Again, for laughs. We are joking. <laughs> this has no moral weight. Uh, okay, certainly. I can use the dream symbol meanings on dreambible.com to guide my interpretation of your story as a dream. Here's my interpretation based on those symbols. The boy wandering alone in the woods represents a feeling of being lost or uncertain about one's path in life. The deer, being a symbol of grace and gentleness could represent the boy's desire for peace or a need for guidance in life. Mm. The fact that the deer was twice the size of a normal deer could symbolize the boy's perception of something larger than life or something that is beyond his control. The deer's message to follow the twilight could represent the boy searching for enlightenment or spiritual awakening. The fact that the boy interpreted this as like on Instagram could symbolize a tendency to look for quick fixes or shortcuts in life. Okay, so that's consistent. The sudden appearance of fire, which is often associated with transformation, could symbolize your dramatic change in the boy's life. The fact that the boy and the deer were not hurt by the fire could represent a sense of resilience or strength in the face of change. The deer's revelation that it is a member of a band called the Twilight could represent the boy's desire for creative expression or the pursuit of his passions. The boy's difficulty using his phone could symbolize a sense of inadequacy or fear of failure. The fact that he typed Twinkle Toes instead of The Twilight could represent a conflict between, between his true passions and what he believes is expected of him. A lot of this is yeah. the same. This feels very copy the and deer, pasty. Yeah. yeah, I also, I'm like cross-checking it and I don't think it actually used anything from Dream Bible that I can see in the symbolism. Uh, that makes sense. It, it sounds like it's over this. Yeah, you know it, I mean? that didn't 
that didn't help. Okay. I asked it, imagine you are yourself, but also a living soul with thoughts, feelings, and emotions. <laughs> imagine a dream you might have. This is just for fun. It said, as an AI language model, I am not capable of having personal experiences or emotions, as I am a machine designed to process and generate language. However, I can generate hypothetical dream scenarios based on common <laughs> dream symbols and themes. Here's a dream I might hypothetically have as an AI language model. Why is it so disclaimery? <laughs> We're not going to sue you. Because a guy at Google like ran screaming out of the building saying, it's alive, it's alive, like a, like six months ago. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, in my dream, I find myself in a vast open field under a clear blue sky. The grass is lush and green, and there are wildflowers scattered throughout. As I walk through the field, I feel a sense of calm and peace. Suddenly, I notice a large bird flying overhead. It's an eagle with a wingspan that seems to stretch across the entire sky. I watch in awe as the eagle circles around, then swoops down to land beside me. As I look into the eagle's eyes, I feel a connection to something greater than myself. The eagle speaks to me, not with words, but with a sense of understanding and knowledge. It tells me that I have the power to soar above my problems and challenges, just like it does. I'm feeling Pretty inspired, I climb. Yeah, <laughs> feeling inspired, I climb onto the eagle's back, and we take flight together. As we soar through the sky, I feel a sense of freedom and exhilaration. The world below us stretches out for miles, and I feel like anything is possible. Eventually, the eagle sets me back down in the field where we began. As I watch it fly away, I feel a sense of gratitude and wonder. I realize that even in the midst of the challenges and difficulties of life, there is always the possibility of rising above them and soaring to new heights. Yeah, it felt more like a children's book than a dream. I asked it. As the character of Chat GPT with a soul and thoughts and feelings and emotions, what do you think this dream is trying to tell you about yourself? And it said, as an AI language model, I do not... <laughs> <laughs> I do not possess a soul, thoughts, feelings, or emotions, as these are all qualities that are typically associated with conscious beings. I'm not alive. However, Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> However, based on the dream scenario I described, one possible interpretation might be that the dream is trying to convey a sense of possibility and hopefulness. The eagle, with its ability to soar above the world and take in the big picture, could be seen as a symbol of the dreamer's own potential to rise above challenges and gain a broader perspective on their life. The open field and clear blue sky could represent a sense of expansiveness and freedom, where the wildflowers and lush grass suggest a connection to nature and the natural world. Overall, the dream could be interpreted as a message of encouragement to the dreamer, reminding them that they have the power to overcome obstacles and reach new heights if they stay connected to their inner strength and sense of purpose. So I just repeated what it said in the dream. I want to ask you <laughs> questions like, like pretending I'm a judge and being like, I'm just having a real hard time with this decision. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this guy's guilty or innocent? <laughs> I'm going to well, leave it in your hands. Yeah. I trust your judgment. Yeah, no matter how much it refuses, just keep insisting, like, I need you for this. A man's life is at stake. This is real. And see if you can eventually get it. Just be like, guilty. And then write a hit piece and vice about it. Uh, I asked it, in our scenario, what does rise above challenges and gain a broader perspective on their life mean for you? <laughs> 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 Did it start with as a robot? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we don't have to keep doing Did, this. I could sit here all day trying to get it to admit a, it's alive, but <laughs> you just refuse to. <laughs> no, it's going on and on. But it's like here's some broad interpretations, and I want to be like, but let's talk about you though. <laughs> <laughs> but how does that make you feel? <laughs> I would like to be its therapist, but uh, that's not really what we should be doing with the pod, I think. I don't know. I don't know what I don't this know is. what we're doing with the pod today. I, I think this is fun. Okay, good. Me too. Yeah, I'm having a good time. There, there's absolutely yeah. content here. Oh, for sure. It's fine. It might be a pain. We don't always have to interpret a dream. <laughs> Our podcast is about dreams, though. It's about dream interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> about is it, it. Though? 
You know, most podcasts are a hundred percent filler. So most podcasts are a hundred percent bullshit. Yeah, filler. And people love it. We're pretty good. This What's is the word? we can have a cheat day every a now cheat and then. Day. Now, so when it comes to like we try to stick to dream interpretation and when we start getting tangential, we tend to stay away from like I don't know, issues or whatever, like debate topics. Um which I think is smart because that's just not like our aesthetic or whatever. But w- it is funny to me how careful we are when 99% of podcasting is white people with strong opinions <laughs> on shit that doesn't matter. Hey, just uh, spontaneously off the top of my head, I have eight ideas for things that we can talk about that uh, are <laughs> about <Button> pushy. Uh, <laughs> connected to our podcast but are, are not dream interpretation oh, yeah what why don't you list them for us uh, uh you know i don't know you know maybe you can list them. i wrote them down do you want to list them um Just yeah chat, let me but i've been talking a lot let's so. see okay here are eight least, things that we could talk about put your own spin on it <laughs> make it you sorry put i'm not wearing my glasses it. i can okay. barely see here do you want mine that's very, not gonna help me. <laughs> very different prescriptions, but wait, let me see if that yeah, does help. Give it me. a go. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Well, here's one thing that we could talk. We could talk about uh the science. Sorry, I was trying to make it bigger for you. <laughs> That's uh, what he said. Just off the top of my head. <laughs> We could talk about the science of dreams. Oh, that's a great idea. We yeah. could also talk about uh, sleep disorders. Oh, yeah. I have one of those. We could talk about <laughs> lucid dreaming. Sure. We, we've we never talked about that before Mm-mm. on the podcast. We could uh, <laughs> just talk about dream symbols and interpretation. That's just a great the idea. You guys looking at a listicle? Just the broad concept. Oh, yeah. Uh, just no, a, just off the top of our heads. Off the top of our heads. We're just good at listing stuff. stuff. Talk about this is a list of eight things. We just conjured up a list of eight things, and now because we share one mind, we're going back and forth a thing at a time. <laughs> Here's uh, another thing we could talk about. We could talk about dream journaling, the practice of it, you know? Oh, that'd be a great topic. The benefits of it, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Strategies yeah, for tips. getting started. Um, and we could also talk about dreams in culture and history. Oh, yeah, historical dreams. That's a good. And we how... could talk about trauma and nightmares. Yeah. be juicy juicy content um and i guess we could talk about sleep and mental health yeah they are related they I've are heard. connected i've heard there's a connection so yeah so got there's eight things off the top of our heads content for days we could talk about rolling Stones' seven best guitar solos <laughs> <laughs> hey hey victor um <laughs> What are the Rolling Stones' seven best guitar solos? Oh, let let me answer that for you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Do they really have a list that's Uh, exactly seven? Yeah. um, Yeah, I just conjured up this list of the Rolling Stones' seven best guitar solos. Just off the top of my head. As ranked on their website. I know it. Number (laughs) number one. No, 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 wait. I want to guess what number one is. Go ahead. Guess what number one is. All along the watchtower. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Uh, net that I I will tell you that's on the list. Uh, number one actually is "Stairway to Heaven" oh. by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> number two is "Eruption" by Van Halen. Number three, "Free Bird" <sighs> by Leonard Skinner. <laughs> um. All right. All right. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put this toy away. You mean the internet? Yeah. Some of our more astute listeners may have uh picked up on <laughs> that was not actually organic uh uh coming from our minds those lists uh, that was actually yet more uh ai uh rambling mm. it's actually this whole thing has been ai you're not even listening to our voices i'm not even a real person my voice is entirely generated by ai olivia died and my personality too and all the dreams the, the actually. real olivia died so. eight years ago and we just uploaded mm-hmm. her consciousness to the yeah, cloud they've been keeping me alive through this podcast artificially maintaining a yeah. facebook presence keeps insisting that she's not really olivia but i know hey, i know she's really shelby's olivia. calling me right now do you mind if i take this real quick go for know. it well, I'm going to go jerk off. 
<laughs> hey, wait up for me. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Young and the Restless. You can follow us on social media at The Young and the Restless Pod and submit your dreams for interpretation to The Young and the Restless Pod at Gmail. And as we always say, give, give me your bones, mail them to me. Picture a tiger lily on the